Uh, my, my name is Huzefa. I work with Red Hat as a principal uh, product security engineer. I have work, worked on issues like Heartbleed, if you have heard of Heartbleed or you know, I've worked on Shock. So this year I'm going to talk a little bit about attacking email encryption, right? How, how many people in the room uh, use G, GPG? Email address nowadays is, is associated with a lot of things. So when, when you go to a particular website and you, you know, when you try to create an account, thing it, the first thing you probably need to do when you buy a phone is, you know, create a Gmail account and, you know, register your Gmail account with the phone. So email is very, very co common. But now the problem with, with email is that email is very, very old. These are protocols which are responsible for sending and receiving the email. They were basically designed, they were invented, they were invented when internet started, which was like, you know, 30 years back or, you know, for, for 40 years back. And at that time when internet started, internet was like 12 machines which were connected together by some kind of a network cable or something like that, right? So, so one day internet would make so big that we will actually need security. So when these protocols were designed, they were not designed with security in mind. So later on when internet spread, when email spread, people d uh, figured out that there, there needs to be some security around these protocols. Attackers which are normally referred to as MITM, man in the middle attacker, which could be your IP, it could be your government agency, or you know, it could be your network ad administrator of the company which you are working on. So you know, these people could easily see what you are doing, they could modify your emails, and they, they could do a lot of harm. So later they figured out that, you know, we need to have some kind of a security around this thing. So two, basically two forms of security were invented for email. And this is what we will see in the presentation. There is there is one technology which is called GNU PG, and there is one technology called which is called S Mime, uh, which is basically responsible for encrypting your email, and both of them are susceptible to attacks, right? So uh, let's be basically see how your e e email works. So uh, things which you see in green over here is basically trusted, right? So green solid lines are trusted, green dotted lines are probably trusted, right? And red lines are not trusted at all. So they are. So when 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 you send an email, you start by type, typing your email from from the device which you have, which could be your mobile or you know it could be your hand handheld device or whatever you have. It could be your laptop or your desktop or whatever. So when you start sending your email and when you actually send send out the email, right? You are send, sending your data via via your local router or you know your wireless device or whatever device which you have. And we assume that you know we you have control of that device. So if you are working in a company. The company net network administrator probably has a control of that device. So this is green. Then it goes to the SMTP so so server which is there. And since the SMTP server is controlled by the com company which you are working for, which we are calling it as Corp1, this is also green, which makes that which means that you know all of these things are trusted. You can basically control whatever is, is happening. Now one, one thing which normally happens is your network administrator or your system administrator will often like to take backup of your email. Right. And if he takes this backup on a public cloud, then it's probably not trust, 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 trusted because, you know, the data is going outside your company. It's probably not encrypted at all. Or, you know, if it is encrypted, then you don't know who, who has the keys to, to encryption, right? So, you know, if you, if you host it on, on Google, you, you are not sure whether Google has the keys or not. So, you are, you, are, you, are, you are not sure whether Google is able to see your data or not. So, that's why we have this dot, dotted line saying that, you know, if you are taking a backup of your email, there is a good chance that, you know, this backup is not trust trusted and, you know, people are able to see your email. Then your email goes to the, the your email goes to the antivirus so, so, so server which is there, right? And antivirus software actually needs to see the content of your email in order to figure out if there's a virus inside your email, right? So most likely antivirus may not be uh, trusted. It goes out to the internet, right? This guy in the hoodie is pro probably, or the guy with the cap is, is the attacker. He is able to see the packets which are going through the internet. He is able to see what you have typed on, on your email, right? And then it goes to SMTP Corp 2. Corp 2 is the person whom you are trying to send the email to. And then, you know, it uh, again goes through the same path. And then it goes to, to the device of your friend or, you know, whoever you are going to send the email to, right? So if you see the entire email path from the sender to the receiver, there's only a small part which is actually under your control. And there's only a small part which you can basically say that it is, it is trusted. Everything else out there, once it goes out on the, on the internet, 
then it is not trusted at all, right? So there is there is no such thing as my email, right? There is no such thing as my email. Once the email has left your your machine, then there are a lot of people out there on the internet who are able to modify. They are able to uh, see what you have typed. They are able to modify five 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 these things, right? And in in this presentation, we will see that even if you encrypt your email via GNU PG, even if you encrypt your email. S mine. It is quite possible that you know by using a lot of attacks, people are still able to modify your email. Okay, so even if you own the email server, right? So even if you own your own email server, even if you have uh, an email server at home, then it is it is not very useful because once the email goes out on the internet, then there is a problem. People can send the people can change the emails. So attackers have access to to your email, right? So the, sol the solution is to use something called end-to-end -end encryption. End-to-end -end encryption basically means that you encrypt, the sender will encrypt and the receiver will decrypt, right? So this is basically what end-to-end -end encryption means, that uh, uh, no, 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 uh, normally the, when you use SSL TTLS with the protocols, like you know, as, I, as I mentioned, there's SMTP, which is, uh, which is used for sending email. Similarly, there's IMS and there's POPS, which is used for receiving email. These are not basically end-to-end -end encryption because the SSL TA, TLS tunnel is between the sender and the server only. So if there's an SMTP server and there's a sender, the tunnel is between the sender and the server only. There is no end-to-end -end encryption involved, right? So end-to-end -end encryption basically means that you encrypt at your end and the email travels through the internet in an encrypted way and then it, it reaches the uh, receiver and the receiver, only the receiver is able to decrypt it, right? So, so there are two standards which are prevalent on the internet. There's open PGP, which is R R RFC 4880, I think. This is the first standard to bring encryption to, to everybody, right? So any person can set, can set up a GPG key, any person can do encryption, any person can send an encryption email. So this is the first mass encryption standard which was out there which anybody can, can, can use most widely used, right? I, 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 I have a graph which shows the statistics. So it is the most widely used method of encrypting emails. The only downside is you, uh, you need a plugin for your email client. So most of the email clients will not natively support open GPG or, or, or PGP, right? So if you are using th Thunderbird, then there's a, uh, there, there's a plugin called Enigmail, or you know, if you are using other clients, there are different plugins which are available. So the only downside is a plugin is required. Uh, there is a second technology which you can use, which is called S-MIME. S-MIME is normally favored by uh, companies. And the reason why it is favored by companies is because it works on certificates, right? So uh, what no normally companies do is they generate a per user certificate. So when a new person joins the com company, they will generate a certificate for the, per 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 the, for the person. They will put the certificate on a USB key, right? And they will give the USB key to, to the person who has joined. Now when he has to encrypt the email, what he will do is he will put the USB key in the USB drive. He will enter the password, and that, that, that should automatically encrypt the email, right? So this is uh, this is a, a most centralized corporate way of encrypting and decrypting your emails. But 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 again, you need an infrastructure for, for this. You need the certificate server, and there there's a lot of infrastructure which is required. So if you are doing this on an individual basis, then people will normally prefer open P P P G P. If you are doing it on a corporate basis, then companies normally prefer S mine. The, the advantage is most of the email clients will natively support this, right? So now, how how many PGP keys are are there on, on the internet? So uh, I I think last time some somebody saw there were like three mil three hundred million GPG keys which were gen generated, and if you see 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 the graph over here, the graph shows a very interesting pattern, right? So initially, when 1997, when uh, the, techno the, the technology becomes slightly famous, there were very few uh, PGP keys, right? And it goes up to 2004. If you if you see to 2004, 2004 is the is the place where there is a sudden spike in the in the number of people creating PGP keys and probably using PGP keys, right? So uh, you, you know why 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 this spike is there in 2014? Snowden. So to, to 2014 is the time when Snowden came out and you know he spoke about NSA and you know how how they are trying to snoop in onto your e email and you know how how they are trying to do stuff. 
this this we are really enlightened people and everybody started creating pgp keys right so we we see a sim, sim, similar statistics in enigmail enigmail is a plugin which is used for thunderbolt which is used for pgp right we we see a sim, similar statistics for enigmail as well if you see 2014 in 2014 there is a sudden spike in the number of people actually downloading enigmail and you know trying to use enigmail right so now there is a problem with with both of, of these tools and the problem is usability right it is not it is not really easy to use enigmail or it is not easy to use open pgp it is not easy to use smime and there are a lot of there's there's a lot of work done on trying to understand the usability of both of of these uh, different securities so there there was a paper which was pub published in 1999 there was a paper published in 1999 about usability of open pgp and the paper is called why johnny can't encrypt right which shows how difficult it is for a layman to actually use open pgp right and then there there was one more paper which was published in 2006 and the paper is is called why johnny still can't can't encrypt which which shows that there was no work done on usability at all right there was a paper which was published in 2015 which is called why johnny still still can't encrypt which shows that again no work was done on usability at all so let's let's talk about ss mime for ss mime there was a paper which, which was published in uh, 2012 which is called not sealed but delivered okay so ss mime not not sealed but but delivered there was one more paper which says we are on the same page which which means that there is no security at all so these technologies are are not these technologies are not re really easy to use they are very very difficult they are so difficult that in 2014 edward snowden made a tutorial on the internet and the tutorial is still available on this website called vimeo right so if you if you google edward snowden gpg tutorial you will this this will probably be the first hit so edward snowden made a tutorial on vimeo showing journalists how to encrypt right because journalists are the most non technical people out there at least most of the journalists are right most of the journalists are very non technical so he 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 wrote this video tutorial to show journalists how you can set up a gpg key how you can encrypt by using gpg key how you can decrypt so that so 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 that they can securely transmit information without the government agencies snooping into what they are doing and trying to figure out what their source of information is right so uh, snowden basically says that you know you you use a plain text you use g edit or you know some something like that and you generate uh, the encrypted message you copy the encrypted message you paste it into an email client and then you do the same thing when when you want to decrypt it right so snowden's method is very very e easy but 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 again there is a big usability factor involved over here none of these technologies are very easy to use right so what 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 is the worst attack which you can think about what is the worst attack right so in 2014 enigmail version 1.7 right so enigmail is a plugin which is used by thunderbird and you know as we saw from the last slides there are millions of downloads so are we are assuming that millions of people actually use enigmail to encrypt and decrypt their email right so in 2014 it was found that enigmail will not encrypt your emails at all right so basically you open your th th your th your thunderbird you type your email you click on the button which says encrypt my email and you send send the email right and you assume that encrypted email will be sent so enigmail will print a message saying email is encrypted but email is not encrypted it will send out a plain text email right so this is what this, these are one of the worst attacks which were found in 2017 because of outlook okay and and this 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 is a very unique case 2017 microsoft outlook had a flaw in which it will encrypt your email it will send an encrypted email but it will also send a plain text email right so this is very very novel it 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 does encrypt your email so i mean it it, it is it is doing doing it, its job but it will also send a plain text email so 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 that all the man in the middle attackers can actually read your email right so in 2017 there was a flaw which with enigmail and the flaw was was with a with some something which is known as a pap extension and what it does is basically it will send an unencrypted email right it it not only sends an unencrypted email but when you actually go to your sent items 
in the sent items, it will show you that the email was encrypted and sent in an encrypted way. Right. So, there is no way for you to find out if an encrypted email was sent or a non encrypted email was sent. Right. So, uh, let us let us quick, quickly look at how PGP. So, we are, we, we are trying to this talk is about trying to attack email encryption. Right. So, let us let us quick, quickly look at how we can attack both of the technologies which we have which is PGP and S mime. So, how PGP basically works. So, I am not going to go through all, all the maths and, and the crypto over here. But what, what happens is when you when you encrypt an email using PGP, M is your message, right? So M is the email, the text message which you are actually trying to send. What PGP does is it creates a per session key. So for each of the email which you are trying to send, it will create a random key, right? So if you send 10 emails, then each email which you are sending will have a different random key. So it creates a per session key, so it is called S. Then what it basically does is it does AES encryption. Right? It does AES encryption of your message M and it you uses S as the key to actually do, do the encryption. Right? Now, once the encryption has been done, it needs to send over the session key as well, right? because this is symmetric encryption, which means that you, you need the same key for encryption and decryption. Now, this session key needs to be sent over as well. Does this, it uses SA and the GPG key which you have generated, it uses the GPG key to encrypt the Right? And this encrypted session key and the actual message which is encrypted by using the session key is then sent over the internet. Right? And then we use a very similar protocol to decrypt. You need to actually first decrypt the session key. Once you get the session key, use AES to decrypt the message. So, this is basically how GPG encryption decryption works. Now, there is, there is a fundamental problem problem in this and the fundamental pro problem over here is AES uses CBC, right. So, CBC is a mode of encryption. So, what mode of encryption basically uh, uh, means is that if you have a large message which you want to encrypt, right. So, if you have say 1 MB or you know 10 MB or if you have a very large message which you want to encrypt, AES cannot work with large messages. So, what AES does is AES will break the message into small blocks, right. So, if I have a 1 K, KB message, what AES will do is break it into smaller blocks and it will encrypt each block separately, right. So, if I have a long message, say break it into 10 blocks, encrypt block number 1, encrypt block number 2, encrypt block number 3, do it for all the 10 blocks and the, then the encrypted output which you get, it join all the encrypted output and it is going to send it out on the internet. So, this is basically what mode of encryption basically means. CBC is slightly different. So, what happens in CBC, CBC is I have three messages, right. So, I have three, three blocks. So, this is what, what we discussed some time back that because my message is very big, my algorithm cannot handle such, such a big message. What happens in CBC is that output of one of the, of the previous block is used as a feed feedback for the next block, right. So, this is basically what CBC means that we use the output from block 0 as a feedback from block 1, use output from block 1 as a feedback from block 2 and so on and so forth. So, this is basically how the CBC mode of encryption works. Now, what you see on the screen is actually the decryption process. So, decryption also needs to work in the same way as the encryption process, right. So, what, what you see is the decryption process. We have one block. So, each block over here which you see is for example, say 8, eight bytes or you know, yeah, I, 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 I better hurry up. So, each block which you see has got some, some, some size, right. And we use CBC method to basically decrypt the blocks, right. Now, the problem with C CBC is that CBC is malleable. So, what malleable basically means that when I change one of the blocks, then you know the output will slightly change, right. When I change one of the size, 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 ciphertext blocks, then the output will slightly change and that change will propagate to, to the next block as well. So, what the, what the attacker can basically do is, the attacker can use the malleability problem with CBC and what he does is he creates something which is known as a CBC gadget, right. So, there are a lot of things which I, 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 I think I am slightly out, out of time, so I will try to uh, explain it a little bit fast, faster. So, what, CC, what CBC basically does is, what the attacker does is, attacker creates something which is known as a CBC gadget, right in which he is able to control what the output of the first block is, which will, which is going to kind of, you know, transform into the second and the third, third block. So, what the attacker basically does is, 
the attacker controls the first block, right? And by using uh, malicious values in the first block, he is able to change the output of the decryption, right? So he is able to change the output of the de of the decryption. So what the attacker has done over here is the attacker has has changed. If you see the last block, the uh, the the attacker has changed content type, and the attacker is able to change this and is able to change this to is able to insert a evil link inside the image, right? So what 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 the attacker what the man in the middle attacker can basically do is without knowing the key without knowing the contents of the email is able to insert a malicious link inside the email right and when when you basically decrypt your email you see this malicious link right you assume that this malicious link which you don't think is malicious in the first first place is sent by friend or you know whoever has sent you an encrypted email you click on the malicious link and then you know done right so 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 the attacker is able to do do that and the reason why the attacker is able to control the first block is because in s mime the first block is always content type right so the attacker exactly knows what the first 8 bytes or you know what the first 16, 16 bytes are so he is uh, able to is able to properly control that and you know he is able to insert this and similarly he is able to control the second block also right so sim similarly he can use cbc gadget and he can control the second block and what what basically happens is he, he, you you get an e email you you basically get an email which has got a, mal a malicious link some of the characters of the email are non ascii some of the characters are non ascii but if you use html email how how many pe pe people use html email excellent so if you use html email html as a standard says that if you have a non ascii character which you are not able to render then please don't show those characters on the screen right so if you have a non ascii ca ca character which your browser or your email client is not able to render in the current language which you have set those non ascii characters will be ignored and they will not be shown on the display screen so by using this the attacker is able to conveniently hide any malicious things which he has done with with, with the block right so uh, how we can prevent this uh, you can use mac right and it is very interesting that s mime does not use mac mac is a method of ensuring that contents of the email or you know contents of your message are not changed but s mime doesn't do uh, similarly we we can have a sim similar kind of attack on s mime as well and i I'm, I'm just going to scroll through through this because i i want to show you something which is even more interesting so he can use a similar and you know he can kind of insert links in email right so one one thing which we uh, which we need to understand over here is your email is encrypted right you assume that by encrypting nobody will be able to change the email the attacker does not have your key right but out of that the attacker is able to modify your email right so this is very very important so we can do this with s mime as well now one thing very very important is how can we make this attack better right so we we have a method of uh, I, I infiltrating into the emails and you know we have a method of changing the email but we can make this attack better by using something called yeah by using something called as a back channel and back channels are flaws which were found in email clients i am sure you know most of you are using one of these e e email clients probably right so these are flaws which were found with email clients so for example in in linux if you are using th thunderbird okay in linux thunderbird is a flaw in which it will load a java script without asking for your permission at all right so if somebody sends you a email with java script right it is possible for the person to hide the java script in such a way that the java script will run and load without your per permission at all so we can use a combination of the attacks which i i described some time back plus these back channels to completely own the browser or to completely own the email client right and uh, since i am out of time i'll probably There are a lot of things. Yeah, last, last, but 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 not least, this is a very very good email. Uh, the, this is a very good link, which talks about how to set up GPG in a secure way, right? And that's it.